Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Tracy Young. In February, the legislature passed and the governor signed a new 16-month budget that is anticipated to address a $41 billion budget deficit. And joining us to talk about how this new budget is anticipated to affect the Pasadena Unified School District is Superintendent Edward Diaz. Nice to have you with us, sir. Nice to be here. For those of our viewers who may not know the numbers, can you give us just sort of an overview of your district, kind of the students and your budgets? We have a reflection of who you are. We have uh, a district of about 20,000 students, uh, K through 12. Um, we have a very diverse student population. Uh, a number of our kids come from poor families, in fact, 62% of them, and uh, very diverse uh, uh, ethnic population. Mm -hmm. And your budget is about what per year? Uh, 180. Okay, because I, I was pulling up the numbers. Okay, and that yeah. was before the cuts though, right? Um, yeah, in between uh, okay. last year and this year. So it's gotten down to 180 and it will go lower. Obviously when this budget came through, because of the global economic situation, there are just less revenues coming in to the California state government. So they had to reduce the budget, the amount that's being spent. Do you have an idea yet of how much is going to be cut from your school district's budget? Well, over the last two years, oh, over the last uh, um, year, we've already cut uh, seven million, and we anticipate over the next 16 months we'll cut another 16 million. Mm -hmm. So 23, 24 million um, over a two-year period. And do school districts have those extra funds set aside for a rainy day, or do you pretty much run a consistent budget because you need to spend every one of those dollars? Some school districts, uh, we were a little bit more fortunate than other districts. We had a little bit of a reserve, and so we've been able to kind of uh, mitigate the impacts of this year's reductions. But however, also, yeah, however, next year we're expecting another reduction, right. correct? So, um, so, you know, most districts run right at their... Uh, right at their minimum required reserve. And so it's definitely, definitely going to mean uh, budget cuts and reductions of services. And do you have a feel for where that's going to be? You may have to lay off like 10% of your employees, you think 1%. Are you still trying to go through that right We're now? We're still trying to assess that, but we did uh, issue uh, 50 layoff notices, uh, mainly teachers, uh, uh, in order for us to have the option to increase class sizes. We've uh, issued notices to counselors. Uh, we will issue notices to uh, classified staff and to but other right now those are just notices, support. right? They're not full. They're notices right, that right. you may be terminated right. as a possibility. Well, we need to have as much flexibility as possible to be able to balance our budget. It seems like I have this conversation with so many educators year after year because we have positive economic years and then we have years that are in a downturn, and so we have this fluctuation right. that takes place. What is the best way, if you, you know, you were king for a day, <laughs> and I were to say to you, what is an appropriate or even an intelligent way to fund education so that we do the right things for kids year in, year out? Well, I, I think, especially in California, we need to find a more stable, adequate funding source um, so that the funding for public education isn't dependent on the, the ups and downs of the, the economy. And it's obviously going to take additional resources. Is there an idea or a model out there anywhere that we can emulate? Well, um, here in California, we're w one of the lowest funded uh, um, public education systems in the country, so other states have uh, provided more resources to their public school systems. So I think there's models out there. I think there's other states. Uh, but I think what it really is going to require is just a collective commitment to public education to be able to provide uh, the type of resources that we need in order to improve student performance. On a consistent basis. On a consistent All right. basis. All righty. Well, as you know more, we would welcome you to come back and share with us what's transpiring in your district and how it's affecting the students. I'd be, be glad to. Thank you for your time, sir. Sure. For Charter Local Edition, I'm Tracy Young.